Okay, good morning. Welcome to the SCORE Business Webinar. Today's topic is Business Finance is Made Simple. And before I introduce our speaker today, uh, let me just go over and just let you know a little bit about SCORE. SCORE Bucks County uh, is uh, one chapter among 300 in a national nonprofit. Uh, we are all volunteers. Uh, our mission is quite simple, foster the growth of small business and assist entrepreneurs in their mission, usually to start a business. We have a little over 50 volunteers here in Bucks, and we offer seminars, workshops, and webinars uh, on all aspects of business, from starting a business, uh, writing a business plan, to selling a business. In addition to these types of activities, we provide free confidential mentoring. If you're experiencing issues, you want to learn more about business, you just have need someone to talk to about your business, we will sit down and mentor with you one-on-one, uh, -on -one, confidentially, free of charge, as many times as you feel necessary. We have volunteers who are experienced in all aspects of, of the business world. To schedule a mentor, to attend a seminar, or even to volunteer, we welcome volunteers and new members to our chapter. Uh, visit our website at buckscounty.score.org. Quick housekeeping, this entire session is being recorded. So you don't have to scramble to write things down or feel that you've missed something. Once the video is processed, each of you will receive a link to a YouTube to the to YouTube where you will watch the video. And you can watch it as many times as you want. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A button. It is there that you would click that and write a question as the a webinar uh, progresses. Uh, that's a, there's not several hundred of us here, but um, there are many of us here. We will try to get to all of your questions uh, before the end of the session. So having said all that, uh, you, don't, you didn't come here to listen to me. Um, I want to introduce uh, Al Cassidy who is a SCORE mentor, uh, but in addition to that, he has a PhD, he's a doctor of nuclear engineering. He's worked for many, many years in the nuclear industry in all facets uh, of business. Uh, we're very lucky to have him. And uh, without any further inter introduction, Al, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dave. I'm just trying to make this thing work. <laughs> it's a nuclear engineer. You'd think he'd, uh, oh, there you go. Can you see it? Yes. Very good. Beautiful. So uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Business Finance Made Simple. The, this topic is really chosen uh, based on my observations during several mentoring sessions of the last several years. And every time I read a report about the business, small business failures, it's, uh, it's, it's always showing finance as uh, one of the key contributors to that. So, uh, so it's, uh, it's a topic that's necessary and, uh, and needed. Uh, uh, the, once upon a time, business dynamic was very slow, smooth, cycle times or market feedback were really measuring months. And uh, social media has completely changed this landscape. And today the feedback is almost instantaneous. A bad review posted someplace requires action to control damage and resolve the problem quickly. In this dynamic, more competitive environment, it's even more important that business owners monitor closely their financial performance 
and react to trends. And for that, it's, uh, it's really need a, an efficient process to monitor that financial, considering that uh, the time uh, available for business owners is uh, really small and discreet. So that's, uh, that's the purpose of, uh, of uh, this, this webinar today. So uh, um, if you, just a few facts about the small business. Uh, uh, it's a major engine of the US economy. It's about 450,000 new business created every year. And this is, uh, used to be the normal years, right? And uh, this year is going to be different and perhaps next year the same. But the reality is that there is a high level of attrition of business failing uh, even before five years. And all those, the surveys indicated that financial performance is at the forefront of the causes, never just one cause, but uh, cash flow and, and lack of planning and monitoring is, is always there. In addition, there are some perceived barriers and misunderstanding about financial tools that, uh, that need to be addressed. So there is uh, about 70, uh, 40 people in this, uh, in this uh, webinar today. And uh, I am sure that you are all in different stages of development and understanding about what we are going to be talking about. So we prepared uh, a quick poll so uh, we can determine uh, where you are in this uh, spectrum and uh, I'll be able to make some, some comments that could be addressing uh, more of uh, where you are today. So, Charlie, can you uh, launch that poll? Okay, so you have uh, uh, 15, 20 seconds to, to reply. It's very simple. Where are you in the business? Are you planning? Are you already starting up or you're operating? The second one addresses the financial problems that you've encountered if, if you are operating. It's profitability, cash flow, cost control, or none. And finally, the third one is um, basically um, how do you intend to, to monitor your financial performance? Uh, we have a couple of op options there. So I'd appreciate if you could complete and uh, we'll wait for a few more seconds and uh, we'll see the results. So Charlie, I think uh, we, can, we can close it and see the results. Very good, so uh, this is uh, uh, very good. Uh, first, uh, most of you are in, uh, operating a business right now, but there are a few that are start up and also plenty. Uh, the, the problems that you, profitability is one, cash flow, cost control, and I'm glad to see that about 30% uh, do not have it, did not experience any problems. That's, that's good. It's, uh, it's a good indication that you have uh, uh, good systems in place. Uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, um, how we are going to monitor some people are using financial package. Good. Excel, it's equally good. But uh, there are a few that uh, really uh, relies on the accountant to do their financial performance. So let's, uh, we should be able to talk about that. So just to remind you that uh, in order to manage a business from a, a complete perspective that addresses, you need to address all the areas. You need to manage operations processes. You need to address marketing sales. You, do, you need to do their financial management. And if you have employees, you have to manage the resources that you have. And all this is tied together with a business plan, which in many cases does not exist, okay? 
So um, uh, in general, uh, small business owners are more comfortable in operating in the managing uh, operations processes and uh, sometimes a stretch to move into marketing and sales and financial, but they are uh, important areas for your success. So you need to find the expertise in order, if you are not really knowledgeable, you need to find uh, resources that can do it and help you in this process. So I just want to point it out because there is a need to balance your, your, your focus to make sure that uh, you can continue to be successful. So today we're going to address just financial management, but the others are equally important. So the agenda uh, for, for the next, uh, um, uh, it's basically an introduction and we'll talk about the, the role of accounting and the different types of accounting. Then I'll give a brief review on the financial statements with the observation that I am not a CPA and I do not intend to go into detail, but I just give you the flavor of what those statements are. And we'll, we'll use uh, the example of Apple. Uh, I took the financial statements from their performance, uh, the annual re uh, report for 2018. Then we move to financial management, which is uh, applying those tools to manage your business uh, uh, in a, in a, and plan your business. And finally, we will have a quick takeaways. Of. So the first uh, thing that, uh, that, that happens is, and I've seen this very often, uh, we use bookkeeping and accounting in an interchangeable way. Uh, I ask, I asked my client, uh, um, uh, do, you, do you have, a, uh, are you following the, the financials? Oh yes, my bookkeeping is doing it. And, uh, and uh, we, we really need to be more precise because we may, we may be communicating at different levels, okay? But accounting refers to the process of recording, classifying, summarizing in money terms, the business transactions and events in interpreting the results. So there is analysis of the data that you provide your, your accountant. So the differences between bookkeeping and accounting are uh, somewhat straightforward. Bookkeeping is in reality, the initial step of accounting. That's when they record all the transactions they, uh, they file all this information in journal and, le uh, and ledgers, and uh, clearly they do not reflect any assessment of the financial position of the organization. It's just the putting the data together. While in accounting, they take this data and they, using the expertise, the analytical skills, and the rules of accounting, they, they put together financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow that really summarize the financial position of an entity. So uh, I hope that uh, this uh, provides a, a, a reference point for you in when, make sure that when you hire an accounting is not for just, just the left side of this, but also the, the right side. And in addition to that, there are different areas of branches of accounting, and I'm showing just two of those. First is financial accounting. The objective is to prepare financial reports for the company uh, as a whole. So that provides a macro view of the financial performance. It's basically the users are outside uh, uh, elements, investors, regulatory agents, and the stockholders. And the time is basically past events and historical data using actual data. That's why you provide the information to your account once the month is complete. So the content is fundamentally financial information and the rules are very strict. They follow the general accepted accounting principles that it's very complex. It's a, a language in itself, and uh, there have prescribed formats. 
and they are prepared. Uh, you know, it, the the requirement is for investors. It's an annual report, as well as period a quarterly summaries that are submitted to the Security and Exchange Committee uh, Commission for all the um, uh, public traded uh, companies. The managerial counter on the other side provide relevant information for management. It provides the micro view. It, it, it by segments, by product lines, and so, so on. And uh, the users are fundamentally managing, planning, and controlling an organization. And it's look, look, uh, forward-looking information, so our projections. They are not actuals. So they are looking uh, to uh, assess a statement, a financial position in the future, more likely to incorporate non-financial information as well, is not regulated, it's, uh, it's internal defined processes and, and, and procedures, and is prepared as, frank, as frequently as needed by, by the managers involved. So, if you can summarize, the left side is what has happened. So the, the accountant, your accountant, provide a summary and tells you what has happened year to date. While the, the other one, uh, the manager account, looks at this and apply those tools to really determine what might happen in the future. So re relying on, on, on assumptions and, and, and forecasts, uh, projections of, uh, of uh, all the financial elements. So, uh, so when you're talking to your accountant, this is the framework that he's working on. And if you are looking for him to provide you some insights on, on, on the right side, on the man managerial account, you need to be very explicit to make sure that uh, there is good communication, okay? But uh, mainly managers are in charge of the right side with the help of, a finance, of an accountant, but uh, you are the person that knows uh, the business more than your accountant. So in addition to that, uh, any business or product goes to different cycles in, in their life. There is starts with an idea, then you launch, you grow, you reach a maturity point, and then you begin, you begin to decline and finally exit. This happens with products and happens with companies. So in a product area, the idea, in the idea phase, the financial uh, information that you need related to break-even points, so what I type of investments that I need to, to bring, what is the working capital that I need until to operate until I, I begin to generate meaningful uh, profit. Then you grow, and once you grow, you reach the maturity level, the competition is very different. So you need to look at strategies on pricing to make sure that uh, you are still profitable and uh, you, you are able to compete and maintain a market share, but eventually you begin to decline. And in this phase, uh, the maturity phase clearly in many cases doesn't have the same good prices as the growth period. And, uh, and finally, when you begin to decline, then uh, you use financial analysis to determine What's the optimum way of doing? How can you maximize your, your, your value in exiting? Uh, uh, for example, if you're talking about selling your business as an exit strategy, the buyers are going to be looking at uh, your financial statements made by your accountant. That is the common language that it, everybody understands uh, and there are common rules and assumptions, so they are credible documents. So, so again, the financial methods are going to vary in, in, in methods and focus, but uh, they are all required during the entire business cycle. 
So let's look at financial statements. And uh, basically there are three and they provide a description of your business. And uh, they were generated after the, the Great Depression. And uh, as a result of loss passed after that, the financial statements were, were, were defining law and required by all public trade companies to submit this information in, that, in the same format. Now, all three statements are needed because they provide a, are needed to make sure that you understand the, the, all the angles of the business. And they all provided a, a, a slightly different uh, um, uh, pieces of information. So the profit and loss statement is basically uh, a measure of the company performance of a, a, a period of time. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a summary of how revenues, uh, uh, how the business re generates revenue and how uh, incurring costs and expenses. So for a, that specific period of time. So the revenue is fundamentally the income that business has from normal business activities, usually from sales or goods and services but sometimes there are other non-operating revenues that is included. Expenses, the money spent or costs incurred in business in an effort to generate revenues. It's a good practice to uh, separate uh, the different elements of cost. For, and direct cost are the expense associated with the production and delivery of a product or service. And uh, basically, uh, the, it's called cost of goods sold. And, uh, and it's, uh, this separation is good to manage your operations because when, when people say you need to reduce your cost, uh, in reality, uh, the direct cost is proportional to sales. They hire the sales, they hire the costs. And that's why there's sometimes I refer that good costs. So uh, in a cost reduction effort, you need to be careful on, on how you address that. And the other side is the indirect or fixed costs, or the expense associated with the operation of your business. And they are not related to the level of sales. So, so for example, the, the break-even point is, uh, is, is the point in which you generate a net uh, profit to pay for all your indirect costs. So regardless of the level of sales, these are costs that are going to be incurred. So again, uh, we are going to use the Apple uh, uh, annual report just to show uh, those, uh, uh, how it looks like and show the differences between the two types of accounting. For example, this is, this is the, uh, the the income statement and and uh, it show net sales 265 billion dollars cost of sales 163 billion for a gross margin of 103 million dollars so here comes the financial accounting is giving the global view of the financial performance of apple you don't know what is coming from what is the contribution iPhone, what the contribution from computers or, or services. It's, uh, it's all global. So important to notice is, uh, is the relative uh, ratios of, uh, uh, for example, gross profit margin is 38% of sales. And uh, the operating income is 26% of sales. So this is good. So it's, it's a good performance. So the ratio enables you to compare different companies with different, uh, uh, different uh, sales levels, so different revenue levels. And, and, and again, this report is, is focused primarily on for investors or outside uh, uh, organizations. So let's, uh, let's construct a simple income statement so, so reinforce the way this is done. So here's a company that has 10,000 units, sold 10,000 units in 2019, 
at an average price of $25. The product cost is 14 and they have expenses in rent, marketing, and payroll. So the first things that happen is the revenue is 25 times 10,000 is 250,000. The cost of goods sold is 14 times 10,000 and 140,000 for a gross profit margin of $110,000 for 44% of the revenue. So again, this is it's a good uh, gross profit margin because this is going to fund everything else that you do in your company. So let's, let's add then the indirect cost, marketing, lease, and payroll for 85,000. It gives an income from operations of $25,000 or 10% of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the revenue. So this means for every dollar in sales that you have, 10% goes to your bank account. Uh, as as or to the owner depending on 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 the the type of company so this is a a measure of efficiency and uh, you need to manage by those ratios rather than the stop line a lot of people are very enthusiastically speaking about the the performance of their business focusing on the on the on the top line but that doesn't mean anything depending on on what, what's happening below. This is the important parameter for you to track. So this is, again, a simple uh, 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 income statement. And I give you everything. In the case of manufacturing, for example, you need, really need to calculate uh, the product cost. And you, you need to include the labor, the material, the time of uh, use of equipment and other things that are involved in the manufacturing, production and delivery of the product. So, um, and here's the difference between um, the, the financial accounting, again, the Apple showing the, the gross, uh, the company-wide uh, values of net sales and and cost of sales and in on the right side is the profit and loss statement for that is more suitable for planning internal planning and that's the managerial accounting in which you define different segments and you define what's the revenue contribution what's the gross profit contribution from each segment and this is particularly useful for managing because the different segments or product lines have different profitabilities and uh, it's uh, good for you to compare uh, and some are in different uh, phases of the life, life cycle of the product that you need to be thinking on, on, on exiting or not or you need to be rethinking about launching a new, a new product. So these are primarily uh, focused on optimizing the overall future profit of the company. So uh, in many cases, by not having this, uh, uh, people have a, a misconception, you know, the best seller may not be the best profitable product. And uh, I'm not sure if you've seen, uh, there are some, some, some uh, uh, TV shows like the Restaurant Impossible, that um, they interview the, the owner of the restaurant and they say, what is your best selling product? And uh, he tells it's a uh, steak this and said, how much profit do you have? Oh, I don't know. So they sit down with them and they calculate the cost of goods sold and the price. And they come to the conclusion that the worst possible product in terms of profit and yet the owner was pushing this as the biggest, uh, the most uh, uh, popular product that uh, he was selling. So this level of detail is needed and companies have product managers that are just looking at this in a much more detail. So, so again, a difference of the emphasis and focus of the, the two different accounting types. So cash flow is basically uh, a tracking 
cash in and out of the operations uh, during a period of time and uh, really determines what is the net cash available for future operations. The uh, business process uh, flow is, is basically this. This is generic and is more typical of a business to business, but you order supplies, you pay for those supplies, that enables you to produce the product, build an inventory. In the meantime, you're selling, you're shipping the product, uh, you send an invoice and you collect payment. And uh, in, a, in a retail uh, operations, uh, this, this step doesn't happen. You get cash immediately upon delivering the product to, to the customer, but you still have the gap because you need to spend cash to generate cash. And that is the purpose of uh, the cash flow uh, statement to really keep track of all that is happening. And in particular, the forecasting is important. So make, make sure that you, you, you are not getting to a situation of no cash. So the inflow contributors are basically cash sales, accountable receivables, investments, bank loans, sale of assets, and so on. And the outflow is payment, supplies, wage, uh, payment for fixed assets, and, and so on. So these are, uh, is, is the same, it's the same that you do with your bank account. There are, there are things in and out of your bank account that you need to make sure that the, the balance never go below zero, right? Or, or you have ways to prevent that. But in addition, in, in uh, uh, financing account, they, they separate cash flow coming from operations, right? This is selling of our products and, and so on, from investments uh, coming from uh, you uh, buy, selling assets, uh, 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 getting uh, customers uh, to uh, investors to, to invest in your company. And finance is basically payment of uh, dividends to your, to, to your stockholders or uh, acquiring or paying off debt, long-term debt. So, so it's, it's useful to separate those because uh, uh, you need to balance the, the level. Again, it takes, uh, it takes cash to generate the cash happens the outflow to generate new new cash and you need to make sure that this level here is controlling all the time but this uh, this break it down in those three uh, areas provides an insight insights of uh, the strategy of the company for example, operations, the net cash from operations needs to be positive, right? It's generating cash. Uh, and the investments, uh, it's okay to be negative. This means that you're investing in the business, in the products, and financing also negative. This means that you're paying your stockholders, sharing the dividends, and so on. However, if you have negative cash flow in operations, then you are eventually have to you're going to see positive cash flow for investments or finance this means that the company is either selling assets or acquiring uh, more debt in order to support operations so for investors this is it's uh, is very useful because they if is negative cash flow from operations we raise red flags in terms of is it a desirable company to invest but internally for you as a business owner, you need to manage to ensure that you are not going to get into a cash flow problem. So this again is the Apple uh, uh, annual report and uh, we are just showing the operating activities and, uh, and, and uh, the complexity of a, of a full blown uh, uh, cash flow statement is here. But they get input from the net from P and L statement in net income, and there are some adjustments because there are again non-cash 
uh, elements in the PN in the PNL that needs to be removed. But in any case, Apple registers 77, 000, uh, 77 billion dollars in in positive cash flow, and uh, they were able to to expand uh, a lot of money. And in particular, that year they they uh, they spent 87 billion dollars on on uh, on purchasing stocks and paying dividends uh, to to the to their their stockholders so having positive cash flow enabled the companies to to develop a, a lot of strategies and the last uh, financial statement is the balance sheet is basically a company uh, list of assets, liabilities, and equity it gives the net worth of the company. And the fundamental equation is that needs to be balanced. It's all the assets, things that are of value that the company has is equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. And that is always in balance. So if you, if you buy assets, you increase the left side of the equation on things to value, and you also increase the liabilities because you're going to pay for likely a loan or something. So here is a, a, a very quick view of the assets of the Apple. Uh, again, they, they have uh, current assets are uh, assets that can be turned into cash in less than 12 months. They have $131 billion. And then the non-current assets, they includes property, plant, and equipment. Totally $365 billion in, in assets. If you look at the liabilities, they have uh, uh, 258 in liabilities. It's a significant level of liabilities compared to the assets, plus uh, 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 shareholders equity of 107 billion to uh, a total of 365, which is exactly the, the asset number that we saw in the previous page. So uh, again, uh, this is very useful for, for, for investors. So let's, let's move uh, quickly to something that may be more of uh, interest is the financial management basically uh, used in the, the applications for business planning and it's fundamentally uh, forward-looking views using using accounting so uh, just a, a, a reminder that your account of, is your partner uh, accounting is uh, very simple even if you're using uh, software you know the way the way uh, if it's not set up properly, then you you may not have a, a full rep, a, a good representation. But uh, but in many cases, are it's, uh, it's it's simple and straightforward. But as the business evolve and grow, to include equipment, you need to deal with uh, depreciation and other elements. The complexity of those tools becoming more significant, and you definitely need the guidance from your accountant, even if uh, uh, support from accountant from your software package on, on how to handle those, those cases. So uh, I recognize that the, the businesses that are here participating today are in different levels of development and different levels of sophistication. So I, I would address the, the monitoring of financial performance or improvement in, with, at three different levels, and, uh, and we'll go through them. First is uh, optimize your existing operations. And the business in general evolve in incremental ways, and you put Band-Aid here, Band-Aid there, and, uh, and many times the costs begin to creep up and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's needed a review of, uh, of what you're doing. So inspect your gross margin and see if it's consistent with your business uh, uh, industry and, uh, and begin to ask the questions, how can I increase the volume of the business? 
how can I increase price and how I can reduce direct costs. The second, you pay attention to your indirect costs to ensure that this is as efficient as possible. And uh, consider uh, outsourcing as a, as a way to be more efficient, use of technology, or even writing down a process in, a, in organizations that have a, a high turnaround of employees and you don't have time to train everyone. It's more efficient for you to write what needs to be done, when needs to be done, and, and so on. So when the, the, the new person comes, he, the expectations are already defined and he's able to perhaps duplicate uh, what is being done before and is more efficient. Uh, another example is, uh, is you need to ensure for marketing is, uh, is one key item that you need to look at uh, very carefully. You need to ensure that there is return on your investment. If you are doing through uh, social media, require your supplier to provide you the metrics and uh, how many were open, how many was this and that and that. So you get a good feel for how it's being done and how effective it's being done. And if it's not effective, you need to change. So, um, and evaluate the small improvements in all those lines. And so when, when you see how can I increase uh, sales, for example, uh, you know, it, it evaluate uh, perhaps uh, one or 2% improvement every year. Uh, you know, it seems small, but, uh, but on the aggregate, and if you do this year over year, it, in, a, in a couple of years, you have a, a significant improvement. I call this uh, growing in place. So you can grow your, your, your business uh, without a major change. And just using this, uh, that simple p and statement that we worked out before, if I increase the revenue 2% and I reduce all the costs 2%, the, the net profit increased almost by ten thousand dollars so it's significant you know it's I, i'm not saying that uh, every company will have this this because it's very dependent on the ratio of uh, cost sold to uh, to direct cost and indirect cost and so on but uh, it may have a more significant impact that your intuition is telling you and the only way to do it is to simulate, take your financial profit and loss statement and simulate that case by, by doing this. Just, just an example, you know, in, in the, I took the, the same approach with the Apple uh, uh, income statement. And if I do this um, 2%, it uh, will generate $9 billion more in, in income from operations. So it's significant. So the basic message is small changes can make a big difference. And you need to evaluate and get a feel for the sensitivity to, to, to address this. Now, is it easy? Not necessarily, but uh, let's assume you take a stretch of uh, 2% and you only accomplish 1%. It's still an improvement. Uh, for, there are items that you cannot change, but but uh, um, how you, you allocate payroll, for example, instead of having three full-time employees who have just two and you bring contractors as needed, marketing, maybe there is a more efficient way of doing. So these discussions need to be ongoing by, by the business owner, okay? No one else is going to, to, uh, to question those things. So uh, do it, and, uh, and uh, it's a way to generate higher growth uh, in, by making your operations more efficient. So the second level is track on a month-by-month -month basis. This is in case that you, there is no financial plan, there is no business plan, but you still get some insights in terms of uh, your financial performance by tracking the results every month 
create a spreadsheet for your PL by month and begin to record the actual results. These are the results that you send to your accountant to create the, the profit and loss statement that they do. But they do on actual numbers, but you, you have a tool in front of you that you can see where you, you, you've been, the changes from month to month, and you are able to understand what happens. And more importantly, you, you can see the trend. So review every line on, on, on a month by, by month, understand the difference, and focus on gross margin and net margin. Are we building costs someplace that, uh, that, uh, um, that you don't see it? You need to dig down and understand what's happening. So all those things can be done even if you don't have a financial plan. In, so you create your spreadsheet and again by, is a detailed spreadsheet, product line or segment, you have your indirect costs, and your profit from operation, tax, net profit, and more important, owner distribution. You know, it's important. I've, I've mentored several cases that people are not taking any distribution, any, <laughs> any salary in years. This is not sustainable. You need to make sure that it, you create a sustainable situation for you. So uh, as, as the months go you compare month to month compared to previous month if you see a big difference understand uh, and take correct action depending on what you find out and uh, the the key here is not to be tangled within small money if you are doing uh, uh, fifty thousand dollars in sales a month uh, don't spend time understanding uh, ten dollars, uh, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. You know, you need to. Eighty percent of the problem comes to twenty percent of, of the costs. Okay, so work on that principle. You don't have to be a hundred percent, but if you do eighty percent, ninety percent of this for all the lines, it's uh, it's going to be outstanding. So you keep doing this. And uh, when the year ends, you have all the results. And then three months later, your accountant is going to give you the final uh, P&L statement for you for the year. So, but you do have this information in your hands very quickly. You don't depend on, on the ability to, for your accountant to provide this information. And, uh, and it's, it's much quicker much more in, interactive and, and um, leads to a better understanding of, uh, of what's, what's happening. Now, in the ideal case that there is a business plan in place, okay? So this means that the, you already have a multiple year forecast for your business that was used in, in the business plan. And this basically is done by estimating on a go forward basis, key elements of your business. It's, is an educated guess of demand cost investments based on your knowledge of the product market and co competition. So this creates a, a, a long-term, a long-range plan from which uh, an annual budget is then established every, 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 every year. And this becomes your plan for the year. So develop, uh, uh, take this uh, annual budget uh, will be a spreadsheet, include one sheet for plan and another sheet for actuals. So the message here is that planning and forecast may be a mystery, but there are skills that can be developed. And again, is, your, is, the, is the summary of your knowledge of, about your business? And uh, uh, there is some crystal ball things. Uh, there are some objectives that you need to set for your business and uh, and based on that objective you need to gauge is it real is it uh, stretch too much or is meaningful 
and uh, and then pursue this. And uh, of course, any any forecasts are always revised, and and that's uh, so. The message is when you you don't have that skill, you need to begin to do it, and uh, you should not expect to be great at the start. Any process requires practice, and practice is doing, not reading. You know, it's uh, my analogy is making it's baking a cake. You can get fourteen recipes for the bake to to to, to bake a cake. And then, uh, and then you, you use those recipes, and uh, the the end product is not good. So then, then you see maybe I, I put too much oil. I didn't follow the recipe. Uh, I put more sugar, and the less the next time is going to be better. And that's how you evolve in in the learning. So the business plan uh, uh, is performance tracking. So the annual budget is your roadmap. It's, but it's also a communication tools or goals and provide guidance for decisions. This communication tool is important, particularly if you have uh, employees. Uh, the employee needs to understand where you are, uh, if you're having problems or not. I, I mentored a company once uh, many years ago and uh, they were losing money. So the owner was, infusing their own retirement plans into the company. So when I talked to their employees, the perception was the owner is not investing in this company because he's taking too much money from the company. Exactly the opposite. You can imagine the frame of reference of these employees in terms of helping so you don't, you need to communicate the problems that you're having and enlist the support and the contribution of your employees. You don't have to put all your guts on the table, but you need to give elements so they can understand that you are having problems. And if, if you are not able to resolve the problems, they are eventually going to be impacted. So coming back to the every month, you review the product line lines, understand the reason for deviation, and take corrective action. So in addition, to, if you put this something together, this provides you with a methodology to develop strategies and different alternatives. Evaluate what if scenarios that, uh, that you may have to deal with, with your business in the future. So this is useful for you to uh, analyze. So basically the 12 month scenarios, uh, the 12 uh, month financial forecast, again, detail by product uh, and uh, similar to, to the other one, but your monthly review now you are comparing plan to actual. And if there is a big deviation that you understand and you need to consider corrective actions, either your pricing is not good your costs are, are off, off, off track and your marketing is not working. And this is management action. So you keep doing this. And as I, I mentioned, forecasts are not perfect. They are good estimates, but sometimes you learn better and you revise the forecast, particularly the first and the second quarter is when you, you have the most impact. So you, you keep doing this at the end of the year, you basically do not depend on your, your accountant to tell you what you did. You know, you have been tracking. You know if you have a problem and you are prepared to handle the consequences. So after the year end results, then it's time to you take the review, your three year business plan based on this performance in the first year and keep moving prepare for the next year financial plan uh, establish your strategy objectives and this begins again so in in big companies this is this is how it's done uh, it's all graphics people see no numbers 
only if there are a big deviation. So there is a group of accountants that put this information together and managers get together and review. And the idea is to be an efficient process for you. In a graphical form, you can understand exactly where, where you are. You can understand the trend and is much simpler like rather than looking for numbers, absolute numbers that, that may, may, not, may not be a, 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 an easy task for you to do it. It certainly takes more time. But in order to do this, you need a plan, a roadmap, right? And uh, you need to put in place this infrastructure. And this is a, a one spreadsheet. I, I, you're able to create those graphs. So you changed one number for one month. This graph is automatically changed. So it's very efficient. Use the capabilities of Excel, for example. And I'm sure that those of you that are using um, software packages, this capability need. I'm sure is there. So make use of it. So cash flow forecast basically is an advance warning or potential cash shortage. And therefore you need to take preventive action to ensure that this doesn't happen and then you can, you, you can cover the needs uh, in, in the future. Cash flow is dynamic and many times it's not so easy to predict. But uh, uh, some business, uh, perhaps restaurants, need to do this on a, a weekly and sometimes on a daily basis, I don't know. Some other business on a monthly basis is sufficient and so on. So it's really determined by the needs of your business. I have one simple example, and this is not, it's just a balancing of an account, things that you do in your personal business. So, uh, here's the beginning of balance of the, the, the cashing of, of your business. They are going to sell, uh, there's a net operating profit of uh, 30, uh, cash in sales of 30,000. So this is the total inflow. In outflow, they have payroll, payment of suppliers and advertising for a total outflow of 26. This gives a net cash flow of 4,000 which in the end in balance is 14,000. So next month he's planning to uh, do some acquisition. So let's see what he can do. His estimate of uh, uh, income flow is $35,000 on sales. He still have the $10,000 uh, payroll. The payment supplier is going to be a, a bit more because he's selling more. And he plans to purchase uh, this uh, equipment that costs $24,000. He's, uh, he's reducing his uh, advertising to $1,000. He gives a total outflow of $54,000 and a net flow that is uh, uh, $19,000. So the end result would be, would be uh, basically negative 5,000. It's a situation that you're not sure when the sales are coming. And, uh, and therefore, uh, uh, you need to take preventive action to, to make sure that, uh, that, that you are not going to be in, in a zero situation. So in that case, either you move this equipment uh, to next month, or enter into agreement with, uh, with your supplier, you pay half this month, half that month, or you can have a bank loan, but you really need to take steps in order to resolve. So very quickly now, uh, evaluating the business scenarios, and I, I've indicated that this is a tool that you can evaluate those business scenarios. Let's say you wanted to grow your business, so you, you understand what you wanted to do and how much you, were, you wanted to grow. So you're able to determine the key uh, financial inputs of that situation. What are the costs of the new, new product? How much uh, capital expenditures you need to do and how much sales you'll be able to get. So with that, you can create the, 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 the statements, cash flow, 
and uh, cash flow basically is going to answer you, will it be possible to run this business during the, this period? Uh, so I need more money or I need to find a different way. The profit and loss will, will answer basically, will be worth it running this business. In the last one, what the business will look like at the end of this period. So growing sometimes without uh, understanding this, you may end up in a situation that you double your sales and your profit change a little bit. So you are doing a lot more work for, for not much. And you need to really think on, 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 on how to do it. So as I was preparing this, uh, here comes St Staples send an email to, to, uh, to rewards members about uh, financial help to a small business, okay? And they have this, uh, this, uh, this uh, P&L to uh, evaluate the potential impact of the con coronavirus impact on your business. And they, they do, a forecast, they evaluate the three different scenarios, minus 15, minus 25, minus 40. So the business owner now understands in a quantifiable way what that means. Is it going to be one of those numbers? I don't know, but, uh, but at least you have some better understanding. You'll be prepared to react to the situation when you come back. So that's the power of uh, forecasting and predicting, uh, it's uh, it's it's not perfect, but it's uh, it's uh, something that helps. And I'll come back to this again. The financial methods are going to be needed all along the business cycle. You need to work with your accountant to make sure that you have a good representation of the business models on how you're doing. Uh, some of you are 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 thinking that your business, your accountant is doing all the business financials for you, but I, I'm, I'm sorry, but this is not the right understanding because you need to do the management accounting, but uh, your accountant is your partner. And the financial analyst can indeed provide you the competitive edge that you need to be successful in any of this business. So, uh, quickly, I would like to provide some quick takeaways from, uh, from, uh, from my perspective. Proactive financial management is critical for success. And it's, uh, it's, there is uh, a lot of evidence and data and surveys that <laughs> indicate that. But you first need to create the habit. If you don't have the habit of doing something, you are not going to be successful. You can, you can download the most sophisticated financial tracking thing, but if you don't have the habit of looking at the results, understand and take me, uh, proactive measures in managing your business, it, it doesn't matter. So you start simple, create this spreadsheet that you just record the actuals, and that, in fact, is going to give you, uh, you begin to, be, be, begin to build your, your habit of reviewing financials. Perhaps next year you go to a next level, a more complex way, more sophisticated way of doing. But let's be clear, to run successful business, you need to understand, create, and interpret financial information. This create and interpret is very important. Not all of this your accountant can do, but more important, the interpretation and translate that into management actions is significantly, uh, basically your mission as a owner. So prepare a financial plan for every year. Um, that will provide you a roadmap of what you need to do and always keeps a focus on net profitability and has to be greater than 15%. And again, ex execution excellence is not reaching one step, is an evolution of learning based on your practice. So, uh, so with that, uh, consider mentoring. Score can help, we can be a sounding board, we can, 
We can be uh, uh, someone that you discuss your ideas, or it could be a formal mentoring that, but it, it's, uh, it's one-to-one, confidential, it's free, and we can help you. So with, with, with that, I, I, we went through a, a lot of stuff, uh, uh, and, and I hope really that you take action in strengthen your financial planning and, and tracking of your business. More than ever, the time to do it is now. It's not next month, it's not next year, it's now. Take good use of your time that you still leave, uh, left uh, and, uh, and get better understanding and learning and put together the infrastructure that you need. I really believe that we all get out of this, crisis, this present crisis. However, there will be inevitably changes in many companies and business. So remember that in times of change is also a time of opportunity. So pay attention and use your creativity to find a way for your business. In these situations, planning is even more important. Making data-driven decisions will be essential for you to find the best solutions. And uh, in the months ahead, you have tough decisions to make, but uh, I, I'm showing some uh, positive thinking that, uh, that hardwire of your brain to think positive is, is a first step. But I also leave with, uh, with something that Nelson Mandela said a few years ago. May your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. That I think is going to be helpful for you. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. And we are now ready for questions if we have some. Yes, thank you, Al. Um, I think there are a couple of questions I want to, we, we, should, we, we need to address. First one comes from Eileen. <clears throat> she says, here's my question. My business was just seven months old when I had to close completely. I was just balancing out out. I assume she meant she was just starting to make some, some profit. All financial plans now out the window. What is the best way to regroup with and without PPP and emergency disaster loans? How to plan now as all business, how to plan now as for business as usual will not be business as usual for a long time especially if you have face-to-face -face business. Uh, let me say a few words before I let Al in, or if, uh, we get here from Al. Um, this is, of course, a $64,000 question. Um, <clears throat> my advice at this point, one is I'm not sure why you wouldn't, assuming you have a payroll, I would encourage you to apply for the payroll protection plan uh, loans that you apply through the bank. Um, it is money that if you use to maintain your uh, employees or maintain your payroll, you won't have to pay back. Uh, so it is almost free money. Secondly, since you're obviously, a, if you have a brick and mortar store and you're closed, you have to maintain your brand and your quote unquote face throughout this whole process. If you're not active digitally, you know, on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, you need to get on there and, and get your product, keep your store in people's mind, keep your products available, offer shipping, uh, put, put your products online, um, uh, even if it's a link in Facebook to your website where they can order products, um, maybe they can send you email to order products. Uh, you have to get creative uh, using the internet um, for, for your products. Uh, keep them out there. If you have a mailing list, main, uh, mail out specials, mail out coupons. Uh, again, keep, don't let customers lose sight of your business because you will open up at some point. Um, Al, do you have anything to add to that? Yes, uh, um, Eileen, the, the, yes, you're absolutely right. 
all the plans, the crisis uh, changed completely. Uh, anything that uh, if anyone thought that this year was going to be, okay? So you you need to first determine where you are and make a negative projection. For example, if I don't have any sales this year anymore, what, what, what do I have to do? Uh, how much money do I need to have? Because in, in, in some cases, you may have sufficient. In other cases, people may not have. And maybe this uh, this loans for for uh, for uh, uh, from uh, SBA may help you. It may not help. So you 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 need to find a way to get the situation. But you need to quantify what that is. I am in a hole, but I need to know is is two feet, seven feet, or ten feet. Okay, and that's what the the forecasting tools can give you and uh, and if you talk to uh, if you have get help from a, a score mentor you you guys can do it in a in a very simple way in my opinion okay but uh, but uh, but you need to understand where you are and uh, quite frankly the forecast for what can be it's uh, it's up in the air and that's why in that case of uh, of the staples gave us is uh, there are different levels because we don't know what is going to be the real impact of this. But uh, planning scenarios can help you understand and, and be prepared. Yeah. Um, she has added that um, she has a, a cafe of sort and doesn't have any products. Um, you know, the disaster loan maybe something you should think about as a way of of keeping up with rent etc so that uh when things do open up at least you know you're you're still up to date um you know some some store owners are going to their landlords and they're telling them they can't afford to pay the rent for the next three months uh, live with it and add three months on to the end of the lease. You know, I don't know if that works, but that's what some store owners are, are doing that are obviously in a situation where they don't have a product to sell when the store's not open. Um, you also just, um, let me say, uh, Al, you got a very nice note from a uh, Maritza says, thank you for everything, Alberto. This is awesome. So, um, and that's good. Um, I want to thank you, Al, for, for giving your time in the presentation. I think it was absolutely brilliant. I hope the people who were here enjoy, not, enjoy is not the right word, but learn something, take home some tools that they can use in their own business. And uh, since there's no further questions, remember, you will get a link to the entire presentation uh, where you can go online and view it as many times as you want. Um, oh, we, there's a question that came into the chat. I asked for a three-month deferment on my brick-and-mortar lease, but the landlord said no, but did reduce it by 60%. Um, you know, I guess 60% is, is good. It's over half. Um, uh, you know, at least you tried. And the landlord, I mean, the landlord has expenses too. Uh, it's a very, very tough situation for all small business owners. Um, uh, Kathy said, thank you very much. Looking forward to getting a copy and put suggestions in place. So that's very good. Okay. Um, is there another question? Hold on. Uh, thank you. Easy to understand. No, that's it. So with that, um, we'll end the, the session. Thank you again to Al. Thank you for everyone who attended um, for your time and attention. 
uh, be warned, the meeting ends very abruptly. So with that, we adjourn. <laughs>